At around 8 p.m. on April 20th, 1989, a woman named Peggy Bueller was driving her father through the small town of Circle, Montana, when she noticed a driver on the road ahead swerve into her lane and begin barreling towards her. She quickly pulled onto the shoulder of the highway and watched as a Chevy Nova flew past her window. Unfortunately, the driver behind Peggy didn't have enough time to react, as the Nova crashed head-on into a car driven by Carol Heights, an off-duty police dispatcher. Both cars were demolished in the crash, but Carol was able to climb out of her car with only minor injuries. She stumbled off the road and sat in the grass, likely still in shock, when she noticed a blonde woman climbing out of the wrecked Nova. As Carol was still catching her breath, the woman walked over and stood silently in front of her. She just stared, Carol recalled. Never said anything. Nothing. Just stared at me. After a few moments of this, the woman turned and walked into the prairie off the rural highway and climbed over a small fence. At the same time, Peggy Bueller was turning her car around to check on the crash victims when she noticed a person standing motionless in the neighboring field. She was quoted as follows. As I looked out across the accident, I noticed someone on the other side of the fence standing there like a spectator, not like it had happened to her. According to both witnesses, this woman eventually turned around and continued walking into the prairie until their view of her was obscured by the dark of night. An unnamed third driver, who also witnessed the accident, drove to a nearby farmhouse and called the police. By the time they arrived and began searching the area, the woman was nowhere to be found. Based on what was left behind in the crash, police were quickly able to identify the woman driving the 77 Nova as 37-year-old Patricia Bernadette Meehan. They discovered that she worked as a ranch hand in Bozeman, a town about 400 miles away from where she had abandoned her vehicle on the night of the crash. In the car, she had brought along a suitcase full of her clothing, along with other items that indicated she might be taking a trip. Authorities were eventually able to contact her parents, Dolly and Thomas Meehan, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to alert them of their daughter's disappearance. While they were alarmed to hear of her strange behavior, they told police that she had been acting unlike herself in recent days. They said that on April 19th, the night before the crash, Patricia had called them to ask if she could come home to live with them for a while. Thomas said that of course she could, but noticed that his daughter seemed to be under some sort of stress, and that she was really out of it and wasn't making sense. During this phone call, Patricia told her father about an upcoming therapy appointment she had scheduled for the 21st, so Thomas advised her to at least meet with the psychologist before coming home to Pennsylvania. I didn't want her driving by herself in that condition, Thomas said, adding that she was too afraid to fly home to Pittsburgh. I told her to call after she saw the psychologist that day. I wanted time to figure out how we could get her home. At the time, Dolly and Thomas did not elaborate on the details of this conversation, nor did they specify if they knew exactly what was causing Patricia such stress. Unsurprisingly, Patricia never showed up for her therapy appointment in Bozeman. Around the time her session should have been taking place, a search party was traversing Circle Montana's hilly countryside on four-wheelers and horseback. During the search begun the night before, police had found a set of footprints about three-quarters of a mile into the prairie, matching the size and style of the Reeboks Patricia was seen wearing that night. However, they quickly disappeared into the grass, leaving searchers frustrated and unsure of how to proceed. Search dogs brought to the area by Sheriff's Deputy Jack Limesand detected and followed Patricia's scent into the field, but her trail was said to have been suddenly lost. Police speculated that this was because she could have doubled back to the road and hitched a ride, or stowed away on a parked hay truck spotted about a half mile from the crash site. I believe if she were injured very badly, we would have found her on the ground at daylight the next morning, said Macomb County Sheriff Robert Jensen. It's open country. It's grassland. There's really no place she could be hidden. Yet there were some that believed Patricia could be right under their noses. 
It was well known that there were abandoned coal mines scattered across the prairie, some with open mine shafts that an unsuspecting or disoriented person could easily stumble into. Police said that because of this, searchers were sent down into the mines to search for Patricia, but nothing ever came of this. Authorities also conducted a 25-mile-wide aerial search of the prairie, in case she was wandering aimlessly. Despite these efforts, no sign of Patricia was found, and the search was suspended after about a week. Patricia's family and friends were at a loss as to where the 37-year-old had gone, or why she had driven five hours to circle that night. Some speculated that she wanted to get home as soon as possible, but this does not adequately explain her strange behavior on the night of the crash. The Meehans tried to give investigators a bigger picture of Patricia's personal life leading up to the crash, explaining that she had spent most of her life as a young adult living with her parents in Pennsylvania, before finally moving to Oklahoma City to study early childhood development. But at the age of 34, Patricia dropped out of college and moved to Bozeman, Montana, explaining that she wanted to work with animals, more specifically horses. She would spend the next four years working as a ranch hand and babysitting in the off-season to support herself. By all accounts, Patricia seemed to enjoy this line of work, although it did put a strain on her financially. This stress, combined with the decline in her mental health, prompted some to believe that she was going through a mental breakdown. In a later interview, her mother would speculate that Patricia had experienced a personal crisis that April in 1989 possibly feeling that she hadn't accomplished as much as she wanted, or disappointed that she didn't yet have a family of her own. Her landlord, the last known person to speak with Patricia before she disappeared, told police that she had called him only hours before the crash to say that she would be gone for a while, not elaborating on where she was going or exactly how long she planned to be gone. As April turned to May, with still no sign of Patricia, Dolly and Thomas Meehan grew more and more anxious that something terrible had happened to their daughter. Sometime around 6 p.m. on May 4, 1989, a police officer in Laverne, Minnesota walked into a Hardee's and noticed a blonde woman sitting by herself, sipping a glass of water. Something about the sight seemed odd to him, and for this reason, he returned to the restaurant near its 11 p.m. closing time. He saw the same woman sitting by herself, eventually leaving when employees began closing for the night. He then watched her walk to a nearby 24-hour restaurant called Country Kitchen, where she sat down and once again ordered just a water. He finally decided to check on her, asking what her name was, but the woman would not answer. He asked where she was from, and initially, the woman said Israel. Yet later in this conversation, she would state that she was from Colorado. After making it clear that she did not want to speak to the officer anymore, he left the restaurant. At some point after this interaction, the officer heard about the strange car crash in Bozeman, Montana, and recognized the woman he had spoken to that night as Patricia Meehan, two weeks after she had been last seen, and over 800 miles from the prairie she had vanished into. After personally speaking to the officer, Dolly and Thomas Meehan considered this the first confirmed sighting of their daughter and although they were relieved she was alive, they were extremely concerned about her mental well-being. This is not like her, said Dolly. We think she has amnesia, that she is confused and scared. We are quite sure she does not know who she is. Over the next 24 hours, there would be two more confirmed sightings of Patricia Meehan. On the morning of May 5th, a waitress at a truck stop in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, noticed a woman sitting at a table alone, drinking coffee and laughing to herself for nearly 12 hours. The waitress occasionally checked on the woman until her shift ended. She eventually heard about the crash in Bozeman, swearing that the woman she saw was Patricia Meehan. After Dolly and Thomas spoke to this waitress, they announced this was the second confirmed sighting of their daughter. They considered this sighting especially odd, since Patricia was known to strongly dislike coffee. That same day, at around 10 p.m., another waitress at a truck stop in Murdo, South Dakota, noticed a woman speaking to a man described as having a slight build and curly hair, possibly being in his early 30s. They were seen talking for about an hour, until 11 p.m., when the waitress said she saw them leave separately. 
This sighting was later confirmed by Patricia's parents. While police expressed interest in speaking to this unknown man, it appears they were never able to contact him for an interview. Throughout May and June of 1989, Dolly and Thomas Meehan traveled around Montana and its neighboring states, following up on sightings that often seemed to lead nowhere. They were adamant that their daughter was hitchhiking aimlessly along Interstate 90, so they made it their objective to stop at as many diners and truck stops as possible, posting pictures and asking patrons and workers if they had seen Patricia. Several more sightings came from this work, including a woman that swore she saw her at a horse auction in Billings, Montana on May 13th, but this sighting was never confirmed. The last official sighting of Patricia occurred on the morning of May 19th at a diner near her home in Bozeman, Montana. A waitress said that a woman came inside and asked if she could be in and out of the restaurant quickly. The waitress said it seemed like the woman had somewhere to be, and when asked if she was trying to get back to work soon, the woman answered that she just wanted to go shopping. Another waitress said she saw the woman talking to herself and that she seemed disoriented and confused. This woman, later identified as Patricia Meehan, sat at her table for the next hour and a half before leaving. Over the next few weeks, over 20 alleged sightings of Patricia poured into police tip lines from as far west as Washington, but no other sightings were ever confirmed. By early June, Thomas Meehan, who had recently retired, said that they were running out of funds to continue looking for their daughter. Maybe I can go a couple more weeks, he said on June 11th. They traveled farther west, at some point saying they thought she might be headed to her sister's home in Seattle, or possibly an ex-boyfriend's home in Spokane. However, the leads and tips began to dry up, as did their funds, and the Meehans were eventually forced to return home to Pennsylvania, without their daughter and without closure. About six months after her disappearance, Patricia's story was featured on the popular NBC show Unsolved Mysteries. After the episode's premiere, the tip line received over 12,000 phone calls from viewers, with many saying they had seen Patricia in various locations across the U.S. While police tried to follow up on as many leads as possible, no other sighting was ever confirmed. As of February 2023, Patricia has been missing for 33 years. Her case remains open, so if you have any information that could aid in the search for Patricia Meehan, I will have all contact information for the investigating agency in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you have any stories you would like me to cover in the future, feel free to send me an email or comment it down below and I would love to look into it. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, stay safe.